identify and explain the arguments that surround the proposed boundary changes to Northern Ireland constituencies. Due to proposed changes taking place within the UK that have to be in place by 2014, Northern Ireland is most likely to lose about two Westminster seats and somewhere in the region of 14 MLAs uh, as a result of boundary changes that are being made. Like anything to do with the likely makeup of the Northern Ireland Assembly, this has raised various passions. For the likes of Peter Robinson and Sammy Wilson, DUP, it has been sold as an exercise in cost cutting, with the argument that why should Northern Ireland, with a population of just under 2 million, have nearly as many MLAs as Scotland, which has a population of over 5 million. At a time also of general austerity, it is also attractive to be populist in calling for a reduction of politicians and their attendant costs which amount to about £80,000 for each MLA when salary and office costs are combined. Commentators such as Alex Cain have, however, pointed out that both Sammy and Peter may be more anxious for further to reduce the representation of the UUP than they be motivated by a desire to save the public purse. An argument against the changes occurring in line with those proposed for the rest of the UK lies with the very special circumstances pertaining to Northern Ireland. As a divided society, the number of MLAs and even MPs were designed to encourage the widest possible representation. When Trimble spoke of a pluralist parliament for a pluralist people, uh, he was paying lip service to the ideas underpinning consensus-based politics. A reduction of MPs, and particularly uh, MLAs, might erode a sense in parts of the country that their community can gain representation under single transferable vote when the density of MLAs per constituency is reduced from, say, 6 to 5. Even Sinn Féin, who electorally would profit a great deal from the, the, and benefit over the SDLP from such boundary changes, have their objections. Alex Maskey has commented that it will tend to disenfranchise unionists in strong nationalist areas, and vice versa in strong unionist areas. The fact that no unionist is elected currently in West Belfast is viewed by him as a break with the inclusivity principle uh, that was promised by the Good Friday Agreement. Furthermore, smaller parties, and particularly perhaps the Alliance Party, which only polls between 6 and 7% of the vote, might be further squeezed under such changes and thus further erode one of the pillars uh, upon which the system was built, the widest possible level of political representation. Finally, there is the argument of the political analyst Nicholas White that these changes have been long overdue. Tiny constituencies such as West Tyrone are not justified because they fall well short of the desired uh, constituency size of 75,000. And Belfast, with a declining population, does not merit four MPs, or indeed 24 MLAs. In simple democratic terms, the folk of Belfast are grossly overrepresented compared to many other parts of Northern Ireland.